uh, some overrides in there so you could be notified of different states. So the app delegate will call up a UI view controller and usually you're gonna be using the storyboard to build out your applications. So the storyboard will present the view and then talk to the UI view controller to have any business logic in there. So this is Apple uses uh, on iOS what is called a MVC or model view controller pattern where a user performs an action into the controller. It then say, for example, it changes something in the model. It's gonna update the UI, uh, you know, which will update the view in the user and the user sees the changes. So this is essentially your, your model view controller type pattern. Uh, that iOS, it's, it's just built into uh, the SDK and the platform. All right, so good standard MVC pattern. Yep. So now we'll just switch over to a demo and we will do some app lifecycle and uh, app states. So I'm gonna open up app delegate here. I already have a project open, uh, pre-done. I've gone in there and I've set some properties uh, for some icons and things like that. So you'll see here that you could set some icons uh, in your project properties. Uh, you could do some uh, uh, the build settings. So all that stuff is in there. But in your app delegate is where you're going to have all the methods. So the first one we're gonna do, you'll, see, you'll notice how we have a bunch of overrides in here. So on resign activation, did enter background, will enter foreground. So this is where you're gonna get notified of all that, uh, of all those states. So I'm gonna add an on activated and I'm just gonna do a console.write line, active state on activated. And I'm gonna replace all these and just to have a console write line. So that way we could see how, uh, the, what the flow is of when these uh, overrides get called. So I'm going to just start the application on my iOS device, so I'm gonna run it. So if you're just getting started, this is a great place to uh, take a look at how your iOS application is interacting with those different states along the way. It's a Exactly. good to understand when those events are happening. Exactly, you definitely want to understand those, when those are happening. Uh, here you see the app is running, let me maximize this. Uh, the app is running on my phone, there's nothing there, it's just a default uh, uh, application. So I'm gonna minimize this so you could see the output over here. So here you see we have a uh, active state uh, that's been called. And then I'm going to hit the home button and it's gonna be in the inactive state and the background state is gonna be done. I'm gonna start up the app again and you're gonna see transitioning will enter foreground and on activated. And then I'm going to forcefully kill the application and the application is now stopped. So you'll see here, uh, we got did enter background and then we did get the will terminate, but that's not always guaranteed to run. So those are the different states that, um, that happen on the app delegate side. But then on the view controller side, we have some states in here also. So you notice here, there's pre-canned uh, methods for the view life cycle. So we could go in there and uh, we could uh, load any controls that we want to. We could set up uh, anything that we need to in this view. Uh, and we have some overrides. View will appear, view did appear, and view will disappear. So I'm gonna replace all these with this. So now these are all things specific to the view, not necessarily to the app. Yes, this is to the view. Okay. Or the UI view controller uh, to be specific. So, right. and, this, and this UI view controller is basically the same uh, class from iOS. So you're using the same class there. So here we have uh, will appear, and again, I got some console.write lines, did appear, uh, view will disappear, and view did disappear. So I'm gonna run it again. And then if you notice here, you also have a did receive memory warning. So that's another override that will come in handy. We're not looking at it today, but it may come in handy if you have some graphic intensive type applications. So here, um, you know, the app started again. 
trying to minimize that. And here's what you have. View did load, view will appear, unactivated, and view did appear. So those, that's the, essentially the, the flow of your uh, app lifecycle and your, uh, your UI view controller. Now I'm going to hit the home button. And you're going to see it went into inactive state on resign activation, did enter background. I'm going to go back in. We'll enter foreground on activated state. So you're probably wondering why didn't we get will appear or view did appear and disappear again. This is because these methods only get called when the view actually appears when you're navigating from view to view. So it won't, it won't be called when you, are, when you hit the home button or when you're backgrounded or anything like that. So just be aware of that just in case. Uh, I, I know that's one gotcha for some developers. All right. So that's only when, I, when we're coming back from the suspension, we're not getting those views. Yeah. But if we were changing, as we changed from one view to the next, we would have those, those events happening for us. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that is it for the view lifecycle. Um, you know, so we have some, we have a good idea and understanding of what the life cycle is, how things happen, and we could go from there. So I'm going to switch back over. And now we're actually going to start building out our application. So we're going to use something called a UI table view. And a UI table view is essentially a list view uh, where we want to show a list of data in, in our application. So we're going to have data for a table view, and this table view is going to be associated with a UI table view source. Inside the table source, you're going to have a UI table view data source and a UI table view delegate. And then you're also going to have cells that, which are going to be used to present your data. And then eventually you're going to have a list that the user can scroll through and navigate through the application. So I'm going to switch back over and demo how to use a UI table view or how to create one. So with that, what we're going to do is we are going to go into, have some prepackaged code. So I'm just going to copy these over into here. And I'm just going to go over what, uh, what they do. So we have a data file. And it's a KML file. It's about one and a half megs in size. Um, so you see here, this is all the KML data that we have uh, that we want to display. The KML is just uh, the like a mapping yeah. uh, dialog, right? Yeah, it's just a, a map, it's just uh, XML essentially, but it has some lat longs in there and some details okay. of the locations. So we want to make sure that is sent to build action content, and we're just going to say to copy of newer. So once that is in. Uh, we also have a couple model uh, model in here. So we have a heritage property. So here, this defines what we want uh, the object model, and we have ID name. So a bunch of properties, and then we have a static method to parse using uh, XML. So we're going to need to add a reference here to system.link.xml. Click OK, and then that should work out. And then. We also have services. So our service is actually what's going to go out and it's going to load the file right here. So it's, again, going to use a, a link to XML and it's going to parse the file and then it's just going to loop through all of them and parse everything out. So from there, we need to go into our view controller and actually load it. So we're going to go in here. And the view did load. We're going to change the implementation to, uh, to step one. We're going to add a, a list. Uh, and we're going to do a, a, a view did load. And we're just going to load the properties right here. So you can see we're using async await. So you know we, we don't block the UI thread. And then we just load up the properties uh, as we go here. So I'm going to set a breakpoint. I'm going to run it. And it's going to compile. All right, so we, we've taken that XML file. We're loading it into 
um, just a, a, a collection of those objects, and then we're going to take that and, and put that into our view? Yes. All right. So right now here, you can see that uh, the breakpoint hit. We have 136 uh, items in here in our properties, and so we know everything's working and uh, loading up. So I'm just going to stop that because we're not actually showing anything. So now in the, uh, the next thing is we want to actually show data in the table view. Uh, so we're going to open up our main storyboard. And we're going to let that load. And again, it's connecting to the, uh, to the build host to actually render this. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to go in the toolbox. And I'm going to add or grab the table view there. The first thing I want to do is view the document outline. And I'm going to delete this view. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a table view. And I'm going to delete the last two table view cells. Then the table view, I want to name that. So you can see here, you know, we have standard property items that we can name it. So I, I want to name it uh, table view properties. I'm going to hit enter. So th those properties not being properties of uh, Visual Studio, but these are the actual properties that we're tracking from our KML file. Yes, yes. Okay. It uh, will get a little bit confusing with the so many properties in here. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to grab this cell and I want to set the identifier. So the identifier is so we could reuse the table cells and we're going to change it to or uh, set it to heritage proper T cell. Make sure I spelled that right. And then from there, we're going to set the basic style or the style to basic. So you can set it to a few different styles. You see if we set it to, to basic, uh, it has a title, so you, could, you have one uh, label that you could set. And if you set it to subtitle, you have a uh, subtext that you could set in there. So we're going to set it to basic for now. And then we're going to save that. And then we're going to close it. And then... So that was just setting a, a template for what we're going to display in that field. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So in the table views, we have a heritage properties table view source. And this is the table view that I was that I mentioned during the slide. And essentially here, this is our table view source uh, that inherits from UI table view source. So we're going to contain a list of table items, uh, and we pass that through our constructor. And then we have a cell identifier. So the cell identifier is the same one I used in the storyboard. And then there's a lot of overrides in here that you could do. So if you just do an override. You're going to see a whole bunch of things in here. Um, you know, there are more overrides that you could do to customize the table view some more. And the uh, Xamarin developer documentation, there's lots of it on how to do it. But for now, we're just going to say you have to override this to say how many rows there are in a section. We know there's only one section. Um, and we know the total rows are the table items that we passed in. So you could separate the, the table view by sections. Uh, but for now, in this, in this demo, we don't need that. And then we also have a get item which essentially just goes in, uh, gets an item by index into the internal list. And this is where all the magic happens to actually display the data. So we have tableview.dq reusable cell. Uh, we send in the cell identifier. And we say uh, we get the item, the current item, and we just do some, I guess you could call it manual data binding here. So in our iOS view controller, what we want to do is we want to add the view did load to the table properties. So, so here we, if you remember in the storyboard, we called it table view properties. We want to set the source to heritage properties table view source this dot properties because those are the properties that we loaded, and then we want to reload the data. So I'm going to clear this breakpoint. I'm going to start it. And eventually it will 
Again, so it's, it's doing that compile, it's sending it over to your device. Exactly. To do this build, okay. So now let me switch over to my Mac here. And here we go, we see a bunch of items uh, that we've set in the table view source. And there's a little bit of uh, lag on the, uh, the streaming here, but it's actually quite smooth and fast on the device. So now, to customize this a bit more, what we want to do is we want to set the, the style of the storyboard. So we want to show the, say for example, we want to show the lat long, so we want to show the, um, the subtitle. So we're just going to go in here, wait for the storyboard to load. So we're going to go back and modify that template for what we're going to display so that yeah. we have now two pieces of data and have a richer view. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that template can be customized even further on our own, right? Uh, yeah, you can customize it further. Um, right here, we can, I'm going to do a subtitle for the cell. So we have a subtitle that we could set. And then you could also do things like accessory. Uh, you want a uh, detail, so it adds a little icon there, or a disclosure indicator for 